And welcome um, to this edition of the Disrupt Ed interviews. Um, today we're going to be talking to Maury Abraham from um, Hobsonville Point Secondary School, who is of course one of the co-founders of the Disrupt Ed um, community um, and also um, one of our leading lights um, in education in New Zealand when it comes to um, disruption and innovative change. Um, so welcome this afternoon, um, Maury. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, Claire. Um, I liked a little chuckle when you uh, gave, <laughs> gave me that title. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Awesome. How are you? How are you? Yeah, good, good. And as we were saying when we were chatting earlier, it's um, it's it's slightly ironic calling these this period of time holidays when it has been so very busy, particularly for um, our school leaders and teachers as as we start thinking about what it looks like as we move forward into whatever this new normal is that we find ourselves existing in. Um, so you, you wrote an awesome blog post a few weeks back, a couple of, what was it now, a week or so ago, time yeah. stands still at the moment, um, talking about the work that you were doing at Hobsonville Point Secondary School. Do you want to tell us a bit about how you've prepared so far for going remote at Hobsonville Point? Sure. Um, and as you know, um, what things look like on about the 16th of March when we started seriously looking at it um, changed several, several times before we got through to actual lockdown day. Um, I, I came back from the weekend um, visiting my mum in a portiki on the 15th of March. And on the way back, I was thinking, I think things are going to get a bit serious. And so I'd better get some stuff organised. So when I arrived at school on the Monday, I gave an open invitation to staff to join a pop-up hui to meet um, the following day or, or, you know, a couple of days later in, in a lunchtime, just so we could sort of think, start thinking about what's this going to look like and, and, and what's, what's going to be the principles that drive my, what we might want to do. So um, we did that over the... A couple of days it was really cool because um, like how we do things at Hobsonville Point we we explored what were the principles or the big rocks that we wanted to um, land and attach everything to because I find that if you can do that then it's easy to make some decisions and having all of those minds in the room that lunchtime um, it was really cool so we we sort of came up with a, a set of um, principles um, which right away had well-being uh, right at the center mm. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, well-being of kids and their whanau and well-being of staff and their whanau. Um, and and like everyone else, we, we worked out that less had to be more. Um, and so we then decided we're going to need a bit of time to work with staff on that. So we planned a, a sort of half-day staff-only day for the following Wednesday when we normally have professional learning. And we thought, you know, that would be quite cool to cover a few things. Um, by Friday, um, late in the day, we informed our community that we'd be holding a full staff only day on that Wednesday um, because we just felt things were moving along a bit, bit quickly. Mm. Um, on the Sunday, um, uh, one of, myself and one of my DPs um, met and we, we started sort of looking at how things might look like when up to a quarter of our staff wouldn't be at work on Monday. Yeah, that, that Saturday announcement was a real game changer, eh, and really accelerated that sense of urgency that we yep. all have to have, yeah. Yeah, and so um, we worked together on on who those staff were, um, making sure they were getting looked after, and then just looking at, you know, how we might cover their programs for the Monday and Tuesday at least. Um, end of Sunday, um, I decided that we needed to move our staff only day to the Tuesday. I wanted to move it to the Monday, but I thought that was a bit cheeky letting the community know that Sunday night. So we um, moved it to the Tuesday and, and let our community know that night. Um, so our Monday pop-up hui um, was about, hey, you know that staff only day we were going to do in a couple of days? Well, we're doing it tomorrow. Let's pull it all together now. Um, and we had our Kai Arahi, our head students there, who had um, tremendous input. It was it was just really stunning. In fact, they walked in, they demanded to be part of it because I'd forgotten to invite them. Um, but halfway through that lunchtime planning session, uh, of course, Jacinda made the announcement around moving to stage three and then to stage four by the end of Wednesday. Um, so planning for a likelihood became planning for a certainty. Yeah. Um, and so... We, we went ahead with our um, staff only day on Tuesday. 
Now, that meant in reality that that Monday, and we only had one block left of that Monday, was the last day we were going to um, see our students. Yeah. Um, and and so you I, must have been thankful that you did have your students there because I know that some schools had a teacher's only day that day and, and felt a real sense of loss that they didn't get that, that moment of sort of grieving and closure yeah. with their students before they went off on their remote journey. Yeah, but I must admit we would have had 25% absenteeism that day, um, mm. which wasn't as high as a lot of other schools. But one of the things that I did um, was I pulled together a six or seven minute video clip um, about what was happening and what it was going to look like going forward so that um, staff could play to their, co uh, to their hubs yeah. last thing Monday because we wanted a real consistent, clear message about, you know, things were going to be okay, we had a plan, stop freaking out about NCA, um, we're going to be okay. Um, and that, that went down really well, apparently. Yeah. Um, and then we had the day on Tuesday, and, and it was a stunning day. Um, we, we talked about the principles that were settled upon, and then we spent the whole day in workshops and teams actually looking at what are the actions and the actual things we need to get ready for the start of the next term so we brought those principles to life. I, I told staff that Thursday and Friday, in theory, um, or Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we were, in theory, uh, working from home and yep. open for instruction. Um, I told them I didn't want to see anybody at school on Wednesday. I could manage the, any kids who turned up who were the children of non-essential, of essential workers. None yep. turned up. Um, no, no students turned up. Um, so I didn't expect them to be there on the Wednesday. I said, the only reason you come in on Wednesday is if you've got to get stuff to get home. Um, and then I said, working from home on Thursday and Friday, forget about it. You've got to get your um, yourself and your whānau set up but I just ask that if you've got a year 12 or year 13 class that you look at your Google Classroom and, and just make, make sure stuff that there's stuff for them to get on with because some kids will be anxious about having nothing set up there over the holidays. So yeah. uh, that was really cool um, to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I know I know that we had a real focus on well-being first and sort of a light a light touch when it came to teaching and learning for that Monday to, I mean, that Wednesday to Friday, because you're absolutely right. It was such abnormal times that we needed yeah. to make sure people had a bit of time and space. And so so you've got a, um, a similar structure to we have at Albany Senior and that you've got hubs and you've got your subjects and you've got projects. What do those look like at the moment in remote contexts? Or what will they look like? Yeah, what will they look like? Yeah, we... We settled on um, an outward facing timetable for our kids. And yep. I know, you know, um, there's quite a range of views of what that might be. Because um, there are some schools who are setting a full timetable and demanding teachers to be online all that time. And then there are others yep. who are perhaps at the other end of the um, continuum who, who are saying, hey, just do some learning. Yeah. Um, we, we felt that we had enough kids who'd be a bit anxious and, and uh, worried about things and also enough parents that we should have an outward-facing structure for them. So we uh, maintained our um, four-block timetable, but four 45-minute blocks um, throughout the week. That um, was a structure that kids could hang on to, but the expectation was that teachers operated um, really flexibly and responsibly and according to their own personal circumstances within that structure. Yeah. Um, so it, in theory, has hub modules and spins and projects. How, um, how many times a week do you have hubs now? Um, we have two 80-minute and one 60-minute extended hub time. And we have a kitchen table check-in each morning. So how we're covering that off is that we're asking our kids at 9.30 every morning to check in to their hub. Yep. Now, all that check in is them filling out a, a ho order and planning doc. You showed just, that on your blog post, didn't you? I remember yeah. seeing that as an example on your blog post, and I'll, yeah. I'll link to that below the interview as well. Yeah. Cool. And, and, and that, the, that coach doesn't have to be present for that because we've got whānau with their own kids and their own grandparents with them and all, all sorts of things on our staff. So um, the kids go in there. They um, fill out a, um, how am I feeling? Do I need to make contact with anybody like the counsellor or the nurse or, or anyone else in the school? 
Um, and then what's my general plans for the day um, that I want to focus on? And then a place for some reflection at, at the end. Um, and so our expectation is they'll fill that out 9.30 to 10 every morning. The hub coach will do their best to try and check how they're going with that in that half hour, but we don't expect them to be live and online at that time. But we expect that they'll have a bit of a check sometime during the day. So a, a little bit of accountability in terms of very student-centred and self-directed, yep. but a mechanism by which your um, your hub coaches can check in and make sure that everyone's still connecting in yep. some way or form. Yeah, yep. and, and then we've built on that, like we have a extended hub time, uh, Wednesday block four. So what we've said is that that's um, our expectation is that coaches do their very best to have a face-to-face -face, um, Google Meet with their whole hub um, so that they can just see each other, um, talk with each other, um, how, how's everybody going, um, you know, and just to keep that connection because, as yeah. you know... And I think seeing each other's faces, eh, is still yeah. really important yeah. to, to, to just maintain that learning relationship beyond trans transactional. Yeah, because right now I've just realised how much I've missed um, looking at your face, Claire. Oh, so really sorry, cool. the feeling is mutual. <laughs> <laughs> and to be tackled at <laughs> at regular intervals. Yeah. Although I've learned with these interviews that I've got to stop cackling all the time because it gets the screen swaps every time I cackle. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so that's how we cover Hub. Um, and then for projects, we've just because we've only just launched our projects, we've said, hey, Get on with any stuff you can about your project, but don't worry too much about it yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we might change that if the closures went on for four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. We might um, have a look at what we do there. Um, and then and our, early enough that if it's a, a, just a bit of foundational time that you're okay yeah. and you can, yeah. you know. And, and also I think we've got to get over this sense of urgency around any of this, don't we, in terms yeah. of, our learning and and definitely in terms of assessment. So what, what's yep. what's your thoughts when it comes to NCA and assessments and in, in this time of disruption? Right. So right now we've told our staff and have agreed if they think it's a great idea that there is no NCA assessment unless it is absolutely urgent. Yeah. Now particularly at um, year eleven, as you know, we our kids do very few standards at year eleven, so there's there's no need for them to be involved in any assessment at all. Um, they've got three years almost in front of them to get their qualification. Yeah, they don't absolutely. be worried about it this year. Um, as far as um, level two and level three, if you know a teacher is confident that all the learning's taken place and something can be assessed, yeah, then go ahead and do that. Um, but be yeah, mindful it's, it's, about making that decision. Yeah, and it's and it's time for that sort of capturing of naturally occurring evidence when yeah. there's learning going on and yeah. there's evidence being produced that can potentially be sort of retrofitted to NC standards at a, a later date. And I'll, yeah. I'll be inter really interesting to hear when we get some more clear directives at a national level. Like I've, I've seen, of course, that we've had, you know, to our principal's nominee and, and um, instructions around derived grades and gathering evidence and so on and so forth. But I really do hope that um, our ministry sees this as an opportunity to make some quite courageous calls about, yep. you know, like I'm realistic. I know, I know they're not going to do anything massive. But as you say, we've already got the option of um, not worrying about level one and focusing on a longer journey towards level two. It'd be really nice if they shone a light on that option and, yep. and actually um, made it a, a really safe and valid option for all schools because I yep. think obviously Hobsonville's been on a long journey where the community know exactly how you operate and why you operate. We're in a, a school that's open to innovation and we're certainly going to be looking at changing things up and how we do but for a lot of schools um, where they haven't had those conversations with their community already, it'd be really nice for this to be an opportunity for the ministry to lead some of that and, in a sense, give quite overt permission to yeah. change their practices. Because as you, both you and I know, that whilst something is a possibility doesn't mean it's necessarily taken up as an option. Yeah. And, and um, I'm drafting a letter at the moment to the ministry and to the minister and other people about encouraging them to give those sorts of signals mm -hmm. um, and I'm also thinking about um, pulling together a Zoom corridor for senior leaders in secondary schools who want to pursue the pathway of, of um, 
just sidelining NTA level one this year even. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I, I it's going to be really demanding. I mean, even if our kids come back in two weeks into the term or four weeks into the term. You don't want them chasing it, eh? No, there's going to be... You don't want that being the priority. Yeah, there's likely to be whānau who are grieving. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's definitely going to be kids who are spread right across the... Um, progress continuum. Some kids would have engaged really well and kept up okay. Some mm. kids are going to be so we have to bring them all together. We're going to have to do a whole new school induction in those first first weeks. Yeah, about getting back into but school. It was really early in the school year, really, that yeah. all of yeah. this happened. Yeah. And, and, and for us, our year eleven's are new to our school. Yep. And if you if a school's in a situation of still chucking one hundred and twenty plus credits at kids um, to get them through to their eighty credits, I mean. They've got less time to scram that into. Um, so, um, you know, I'm keen to just talk with some school leaders about how how they could simply sideline NCA Level 1 this year. Yeah. It, it would be the biggest release of stress and anxiety on their teachers and on their kids, and it gives them that space then to concentrate mm -hmm. on the, especially the Q3s, who yep. are the, sorry, the Year 13s who are graduating this year. We need to be able to focus on them and make sure things are okay for them, but also on our uh, year 12s for level two, because it's really important. It's hard to do that if you're assessing like crazy and moderating like crazy, yeah. but you say level one. So, and, and, and Yeah, and I also wondered if there was potential to, you know, the other thing that I've talked about, obviously, in the, the new change package is going to 60 credits. And the reality is that would serve no benefit um, if they did that and then didn't let, let you carry over the 20 credits because it's really the same, same. Mm -hmm. But I did wonder if there was potential for this year only to do a bit of a combination of those two things, i.e. allowing the level twos and threes to carry over the 20 credits and also change the um, the goalpost, you know, mm -hmm. number at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I know in other countries I've scrapped um, the, the exams and yeah, obviously yeah. because for a lot of schools, the end of year is the middle of the year and so mm. um this is having an immediate impact on the ability to do examinations and those sorts of things so mm. yeah i really do th hope we see a, a change in the national goalposts as well yeah. The, yeah. the other thing I, i've been thinking about is um it, it blows me away how often in this period i've been thinking about to the stuff that we were privileged to be involved in when we were setting up Hobbs and Point secondary school and the tra travels that we did so when we went to canada and traveled through the self-directed um learning schools and we went on our other trip and we um you know the the things that we saw in america and the stuff we saw at the big picture school and those sorts of things and can't help thinking that being thrust into this situation has made me recognize how we may have better served our students when we had them face to face in terms of um, enabling and developing learner agency and developing those competencies and skills that enable them to be more self-directed um, when we have them face to face. So I know one thing we're doing as a senior leadership team is undertaking a review of um, what it's gonna look like when we get out of this lockdown period and come back into a face-to-face -face environment and how we might change our practice so as to better enable our learners and our teachers to be prepared for moving in and out of face-to-face -face and remote teaching and learning. And we're playing around with um, an idea of making our Thursdays and Fridays self-directed learning days with keeping the timetable structures, but giving the um, students a lot more opportunity to be identical on the Thursday and Friday, and the teachers are on the floor according to their timetable, um, but the students can no negotiate with it. The sort of stuff that we saw yep. in Canada, but like a baby steps version and of that. You, and would you see, because you're a senior school, so mm. um, the kids are a bit older, would you see that on those Thursdays and Fridays, kids had the option to be off or on site? I think we would initially start with on-site. I, 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 in my head, I keep thinking, where do we start with this where we don't scare the horses, i.e. in terms of the students, the teachers, all the community? Because we don't want to look like suddenly we've let everything go in terms of our structure on the Thursday and Friday. So I guess my initial thinking is that we start off with a more supported version of self-directed learning in the first return back. And then depending on how we go in time, 
work towards that becoming increasingly self-directed on the Thursday and Friday with a potentially maybe in the long run doing what they did in Canada where they had the check-in and the check-out at the end of the day, but a lot more freedom and flexibility yeah. between. I, I just feel like this is that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to... Well, well, I think we've got a responsibility to do things a bit differently to prioritise and enable the skills and dispositions and competencies of both our students and our teachers that we would nearly wish they had now. Mm. Yeah, two, two comments on that. Um, one is um, we had a disrupted um, day near the end of last year and we went out for dinner, a few of us, and we had a really neat conversation, some of us, about if schools went to a four-day week, how that would be really transformational for um the society because yep. um, it would force lots of other people to think about that. Um, and that's been sitting in my head for a while. And during February, before this hits, hit, I thought, right, once we've got the year underway, I'm going to bring a group of people together and explore what would a four day week for kids and a five day week for teachers look like? Yeah. Because I think um, that that would, because we've got to think about staff sustainability as well our job yep. is unsustainable and it's too demanding so we've got to look at how we can free staff up as well so they can really focus on the important stuff and was thinking you know if friday was the day that um kids weren't at school um though kids could come in if they needed really strong supported learning so that would mean you've got this body of staff who could really focus on your priority learners mm. the kids who need a lot of scaffolding um and, and we could then grow kids self-regulation even faster than what we're doing now yeah um and you know we'd still have to look at what that timetable might look like for people and such like but i was sort of playing around with that idea um but now where i think i'm going to go and i haven't had a chance to talk to any of my people about this but i think our big how might we when we go back when we get back together is how might we capture all the cool stuff about mm -hmm. what's happening now around teaching and learning and what might that look like for schooling at Hobsonville Point Secondary School from 2021 yeah. um, and take our time to to really explore um, the, the idea you've suggested which is pretty s similar to the big picture one you know they're off site yeah. for two days or they're actually off site for two days a week on internships and you've got a history of project learning and yeah. such like so you don't even need to shift that big boat around um but the thing is there's one thing i'm really coming to understand is that especially the way we came together for that planning is so many answers are in the room yeah and totally. i've got to i've got to stop this thing of wanting to come up with solutions in my own head but if i got that same group of people together and said right how might we capture all of this and have a real student agentic self-regulated dispositional focused curriculum with a bit of off-site and on-site going on yeah yeah, yeah. And, I, and i think having that mindset hey of terms of going it's never about just coming up with a solution and that being it either like no, no. i'm really aware that my thinking and our thinking collectively um as a school about what it needs to look like has changed already in the last two weeks and will continue yeah. to evolve yeah. and our vision of what it needs to look like when we're in school and we're remote will continue to evolve. And um, the key is, I think, supporting our teachers, but also our, our colleagues and leadership around all around the traps to to be open to because I don't know if it's it's a common mindset. You know, we we hold on to structures um, as a sense of sort of security quite strongly mm -hmm. in education. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. we know that there's always been things that you could do, but um, we're very hesitant to actually enact them, um, I, I guess, because, you know, there's there's pragmatic reasons why we think like that, I guess, in terms of how we slice and dice our resources. Yeah. Mm. But also this perception um, that if you're trialling new things, that somehow you're you're running the risk of making, you know, students guinea pigs. And, and I think yeah. we've got to, I think that's, this current situation has, in a sense, thrown that out of the window because we've all been yep. forced into yep. a new and different situation. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so I hope we can see a real period of all of our colleagues sharing their practice. Because, you know, as, as you and I know, like we, we're probably more similar than most, but even you and I have disagreements mm -hmm. and, and there is no right model. 
and right. every model is absolutely context yep. bound, um, yep. depending on the you know the location, the age, mm. the character of of yep. um, the school community as well. So. Yeah, hence the you know me being really interested to try and talk to as many people as possible about yeah. what they're learning and doing yeah. at this point in time. Okay, yeah, so like, where, sorry, well, you go. Mark. Just gonna say it's just like the NCA level one thing. You know, there's a lot of people out of there that think I've got this barrow that I push um, about it. The only reason I push it is because I've seen the value of it, um, and I've got nothing to gain by anybody else doing what we do. Um, but you know, I'm really keen to share our experience and, and to help other people think about how they might do that. So this is a bit of a plug, you know, if there's any senior leaders out there that would be keen to be part of a, a Zoom hookup, um, to just talk about it, um, just email me and, um, you know, because I want to set something up uh, the middle of next week. Awesome. Okay, and make sure I'll, I'll put a little note, and if you don't mind, I'll just put your, um, your email contact yep. below this as well for people to get in touch. And um, so thank you so much for um, joining me this afternoon, Mori. I really appreciate it. And um, once again, we're always looking for new people and new perspectives. So if it's anyone's interested, um, I can, I, I'll set up and interview you and or Steve will, or maybe we'll even get Mori getting onto the interviews. More of us, the merrier, I think, yeah. in doing this kind of thing. Um, so um, thank you for joining us. And until um, next time, I'm going to stop the recording now, Mori. You can hang on the line and <laughs> we can yes, continue I'll... our chat. Cool. <laughs>